The reason why Christianity is a false religion is not because Matthew was a schlamazel, not because Matthew is just riddled with errors. It is a false religion because its core teachings are false, are opposed by the Jewish scriptures, and the writings of Matthew and the other gospel authors and the writers of the epistles that are canonized, especially the letters of Paul, misquote the Jewish scriptures deliberately. You are live on the air. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. You're live on the air. Hi, I'm Malachi. Hi. Malachi, welcome. Um, I have a really cool question for the rabbi. Um, Isaiah 44, 7, God warns us that uh, if anybody wants to pretend to be him, to just ask if they know history, and if they get it wrong, then they're obviously false. Doesn't this kind of like prove the stuff in the New Testament where they continually get history wrong, like in Matthew, where they have, in 23, 34, they get the wrong Zechariah, and in Acts 7, they get the wrong amount of people that went down to Egypt, and they get the cave of Machpelah wrong, and uh, even in Luke, where they say the city of David, he was, uh, Jesus was born in the city of David, where he was actually born in Bethlehem, doesn't that kind of like prove the Isaiah 44? And wouldn't it be simple to fix these errors? And why haven't they fixed in 1,700 years? Viewers don't realize how interesting your question is. You picked, for example, Matthew 23. You said verse 34, but it's actually verse 35. So Matthew makes a mistake. What we are told in Matthew 23 is Jesus is speaking to Jews, and he says, on you should come all the righteous blood that was shed on earth. I mean, you're responsible for every murder on earth, from the blood of the righteous Abel, who was the first victim of murder. So the Jews are responsible for killing Abel, somehow, to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Barachiah, who you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. So that's actually 2335. So I'll just make it easy for you, the viewers. How many Zacharias do you know of in the Hebrew Bible? I mean, can you name? Well, I know there's one you can name, right? Like who would that be if you had to go? You'd say that's the author of the book of Zechariah. Okay, and that's Zechariah, the son of Barachiah. Okay, can you name a second person with the name Zechariah? Well, if you could, that's pretty good. Um, that's like Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, who actually is murdered, who actually is assassinated. Another Zechariah was a very short-lived. Uh, king of the northern kingdom. So there are a handful of Zacharias in Tanakh, but everybody knows one of them, and Matthew knew that one, and he got it wrong, which means Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, was not the one who was murdered by the temple, by the altar, as it turns out on Yom Kippur. He was not the right guy. He actually made a mistake, and it really is Zechariah, the son of Yehudah. So you're right, he made an error. You asked the question, and I'm going to seize it, why didn't the church correct it? They did in the book of Luke. If you open Luke chapter 11, verse 51, the author of Luke was very aware of Matthew 23, verse 35. And this is what makes it incredibly interesting. In Luke eleven fifty-one. 51, that's a parallel passage. It's Zechariah, the son of who? Bingo. It's not there. Why? The author of Luke, whoever wrote the book, went, oops, let's just select and delete. Now, let me say this. It's a mistake. People can make that mistake. There's actually a Targum. It's not the famous Targum, Unclus, you know, but there's a later Jewish Targum where you, a Targum means a translation to Aramaic where that mistake is made. It's, the author of Matthews made a mistake. The other mistakes that you find, like where are the patriarchs buried? Well, 
whoever wrote the book of Luke Acts thought that the tomb of the patriarchs is in Shechem in the north. It's a very well-known place. Shechem is really well-known, but it got it wrong because it wasn't in Shechem, which is modern day. They call it Nablus. But the Tomb of the Patriarchs, I visited it many times. I take my tourists there, and it's in Hebron. It's very well-known. In fact, Herod the Great, that means the one who built the Second Temple, he actually built the famous tomb that's sitting around. It's, so it's a really important place. Right, so the Christian Bible is riddled with mistakes. I don't, I think this is very important, very significant in the following way. The fact that there are mistakes in the Christian Bible, like these kinds of mistakes, it does tell us of the human origin of the book. It was, it's a humongous mistake. The reason is Zechariah, the son of Yehoyada, is the last person in the Tanakh to be murdered. The last person. So Abel's the first, Zechariah, the son of Yehoyada, the last. So that's bookshelf murders. What, f from a scholar's perspective, this is really interesting because this tells us that the author of Luke corrected Matthew. That's really interesting. And yet the artifacts of Matthew's error is there for all the world to see. And it's very clear that Luke is correcting Matthew. Now, this goes on a lot. You know, Matthew and Luke are both correcting Mark. If Mark says something that's awkward, if Matthew in the Eucharist and Mark place eating the bread before the wine, Luke is going to correct that in Luke 22 and place the drinking of the wine before the eating of the bread. He's going to correct it. John is going to correct the Synoptic Gospels and have Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus prepare and take care of the spices for Jesus' body before the Sabbath because they know very well that why would you put spices with a body three days after it's been in the tomb. So this, this is going on all over the place. The reason why Christianity is a false religion is not because Matthew was a shlemazel, not because Matthew is just riddled with errors. It is a false religion because its core teachings are false, are opposed by the Jewish scriptures, and the writings of Matthew and the other gospel authors and the writers of the epistles that are canonized, especially the letters of Paul, misquote the Jewish scriptures deliberately. These are not errors. These are not mistakes. These are criminal corruptions, deliberate frauds. I'm, I'm talking about the mens rea, the guilty mind. These were done deliberately to Matthew chapter 1, chapter 2, to Romans chapter 9, Romans chapter 11, Galatians chapter 3. It's all over the place. And that's what's very interesting. But as it turns out, the errors that we find in Luke, for instance, where is the tomb of the patriarchs, that's very valuable because there are people, I'm not going to name them, I don't want to embarrass people, but there are a lot of Christian New Testament scholars that that seek to convey how Luke was so intimately knowledgeable of the land of Israel. He knew where the sycamore trees were. He knew what kind of coinage they they used. Really, like he, I mean, to get Hebron. Hebron's a really important place in the Bible, in the Book of Jerus in Genesis, where you're you're not going to find Jerusalem, okay? But Hebron and Shechem are everywhere. That's I mean, understand how important these cities are in the Book of Genesis. Lahavdol. This is like the difference between New York and Los Angeles, the two most important cities in the United States. This is not, you know, not knowing that Long Island technically is not part of New York City. It's not one of the five boroughs. It's not that kind of mistake. It's not realizing that uh, that um, Teaneck, New Jersey, or Passaic, New Jersey, either of them 
are 15 minutes from Manhattan, but thinking they are part of New York because they're part of greater New York. It's not that kind of mistake. It's messing up Miami and San Francisco. That means you have no clue. Do you understand the difference? So it, this, so that's very interesting. They have no clue, no idea to make that kind of error of where not anybody is buried. And as far as the city of David, that part they're correct on because as it turns out, Bethlehem is the city of David, meaning is a city in which King David was born in. And that's Bethlehem. So that is correct. And that you'll see in 1 Samuel chapter 17. So it's explicit in Tanakh that Bethlehem is the city in which King David was born. You see, my dear friends, you see, we're not, oh, Matthew made a mistake and he got the wrong Zechariah. Oh, it's a mistake. It's true. It's a, the interesting is the thing from a scholar's perspective is, oh, and Luke corrected Matthew. That's much more interesting. Thank you for your question. Adonolach, <laughs> 